Hello, this walkthrough includes a basic method of using AI content to project onto a 360 degree panoramic viewport. It represents my first approach of the trials and errors I found with mapping AI diffused content. This demonstration will hopefully inspire those that are interested in my work in art form. The software I used was a commercially licensed version of Touch Designer, as well as high resolution imagery that has been diffused with plants and sunlight. Non-commercial license users will be limited to resolutions of less than 1280 pixels in dimension and therefore will not be able to achieve the same quality results as found in this walkthrough. Other software platforms and approaches may be used, however the principles will be similar. This demonstration is intended for intermediate to advanced users of Touch Designer that are familiar and comfortable with node-based programming and parameters. At the time of recording, I used Touch Designer version 28040 on a 64-bit Windows 10 machine. The hardware includes an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti GPU and an AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1950X CPU. In a brand new project, I chose to add an image to the workspace. This image is an equirectangular representation of a room. The entirety of this photo was captured and then projected onto a rectangular 2D image. Its dimensions are 8192 by 4096 a 2 to 1 pixel ratio. This image will act as a base for later projecting our diffused content. We will also be using this as an initial image to diffuse content onto. However, if we diffuse content onto this type of projection, a lot of unrealistic distortion would occur. The dataset is trained on perspective images, not equirectangular. The result would bend and warp elements of the scene that would otherwise be orthographic and linear. We must first take some steps to unwrap this projection. So when we diffuse content onto it, it will remain coherent. Firstly, we add an operator, a projection top. This gives us the ability to convert our image to a cube map texture. Next, we add a cube map top to our chain. This will help us rotate the projection to have the most perpendicular lines possible. When diffusing content on this initial image, we will retain those straight lines. Next, we add a crop top to eliminate the ceiling and floor space of the projection. I used a value of 0 0.333 for the bottom parameter and 0 0.6666 for the top parameter. This will yield an image that is 8192 by 2048, a 4 to 1 pixel ratio. Now we will save this image to our hard drive as a PNG to be readied for diffusion. Our intent is to re-import this image as an overlay of the initial image we started with. Any image to image program can be used at this step, whether it be a custom local build, uh, stable diffusion, or other AI methods, as long as it can retain the aspect ratio of four to one as per our initial image. After you've diffused your content and altered its imagery, we can now add it back to the project. I chose plants, bookshelves, and sunlight to be added to the image. It retained the most important shapes and context of the original scene, like windows, tables, and fixtures. This will help us blend it back into the original projection without skewing the overall look of the room. We no longer need our export images, and now we'll be focusing on adding the new diffused content onto our original. Notice that the image we cropped out earlier is a match of an aspect of the new diffusion. However, the AI model I used for this demonstration is a different resolution. We will need to scale this back up to appropriate dimensions. For the purpose of this walkthrough, I chose a linear alteration. However, an AI upscaler or software can be used here. Now that our image has been scaled, we can focus on overlaying it to the horizontal cube map. I chose to send this first to a null top with the intention of adding other features later on in the walkthrough that will assist in productivity. Next, I add an under top that will stack one image to be layered under the other. I ensure the fixed layer from input one and the pre-fit overlay is set to the native resolution. Upon inspection, we'll immediately notice that there's obvious seams where the AI did not have further context to diffuse onto. We will now mitigate those seams by making a gradual blend from the original content to the new diffused one. This is why I use the null top in practice.
First, I add a rectangle top and adjust its resolution to 8192 by 2048. I then resize its output to 0.96 and 0.22 to leave a small transparent border around its edges. Next, I add a blur top to give gradual edges to our mask that we are essentially creating. I set the pre-shrink to 8 and the filter size to 32, producing a nice blurred edge. I now add a multiply top to the area of the white rectangle to affect the diffused image. I add this to my original null top. Notice the feathered edge created by this feature. Now it looks as if the seams are blended and continuous. I will now send this to a null top as a placeholder. Our horizontal cube map is currently at 8192 by 6144 pixels. We will now focus on staging the image to be projected as a material similar to the original format of the equirectangular image we started with. We prepare this by undoing the steps that we unwrapped initially, starting with a cube map top plugged into our first input and set to a horizontal to cube map setting. This gives us our familiar cross pattern we used at the start of our project. We can now add our projection top. This creates a square image of 4096, which we can use for unwrapping our environment into a seamless output. We will send this null top and create a constant mat. We drag the null operator onto the mat to assign its color information. We can now start building our geometry needed to project our material onto. We start with a sphere SOP. This will act as our skybox. I changed the primitive type to polygon and adjusted its frequency to 30. This allows for a smoother surface with smaller polygon size. So our final environment will retain a cleaner mapping. Next, we send our sphere SOP to a geometry comp. This will now be ready to accept our material. We drag the constant mat onto the geo comp as its material operator. We can now observe that the material has been evenly painted across the surface of the sphere with correct mapping. In order to properly view this mapping, we will continue our network by adding a camera component. We want to set the translation to zero, placing the view inside the sphere at center. We can then set our field division angle to 100 degrees to widen the viewport while remaining inside the sphere map. If we turn on the pre-X form, we can simulate rotation across our view. Next, we add a render top to properly output the imagery as color space. I changed the output to 1920 by 1080 and adjusted the anti-alias to 16x to minimize pixelation and create a vivid output. Many movement devices can be used to move around the viewport of this projection. Anything from VR tracking to MIDI inputs to custom UIs can be implemented. I chose to include simple mouse movement to showcase how to navigate the scene in a cinematic fashion. I added a mouse in chop. This tracks my X and Y position of my cursor on the screen space and translates it to a value. However, we need to change the range of this data to something that can be used for rotation information. I added a math chop with a multiply factor of 400. To smooth out the operation of the mouse movements, I added a lag chop. I set the rise and fall values to 4 seconds to avoid harsh jitter and jumpy movements. I finalized this chain with a null chop. We can now reference those values to manipulate our camera movements. I set the null chop to active and dragged its parameters to the camera comp pre-X form rotate fields as references. The Y value of the mouse operates the X rotational parameter and the negative mouse value of X operates the Y axis. This allows for a familiar look around functionality. We can now see the viewport moving around with the mouse. Turning on the blue flag of the render top allows for a larger view as we observe our environment. To recap, we started with the base equirectangular image, 
we projected it to a cube map format, flipped the cube map horizontally. We then used this to diffuse new content. We masked the edges to help with blending. We then superimposed this diffusion onto the original mapping. Next, we translated it back into a cubat texture, and we rewrapped it to a square projection. This became the color space for our material. We built our sphere setup to act as our skybox, and using mouse input, we were able to look around in our render viewport. With this functionality, you can choose to send the output to post-processing, recording to a file, or even spout NDI for use in another software or workflow. This approach also allows for input, starting point, and diffused images to be dynamic, whether it be a video, real-time diffusion, or blending between frames. With fine-tuned models and diffusion, improved environments can be produced including floorings and ceilings or perhaps layers of projection. More advanced integration includes a separate engine that recycles the input and diffusion to update new content in a queue fashion, which can be utilized through an API, or as a separate visual software altogether, depending on the use case. The entirety of this project can also be reimagined in other platforms and tools such as Unity or Unreal Engine for increased functionality and feature sets. I hope this demonstration has shed some light and inspired those that want to project content onto a 360 degree perspective. Thanks for watching.